morning. Let's stand and let's sing together on this beautiful Sunday. Darkness held me down, but Jesus pulled me out. I am no longer bound. I'm so glad He changed me. See, I'm now a new creation in Christ. The old has gone, there's new life. I live by faith, not by sight. There is a new the victory see it's all over me i'm so glad he changed me see i now a new creation in christ the old has gone there's new life i live by faith not by sight let's sing it
Praise the Lord. Welcome in the name of Jesus Christ and of course the Father and the Spirit that gives us life. We are so happy to be here this morning. My name is Ben Nobles, one of the pastors here. And I don't know about you, I had a long week. It was an awesome week. We got to take a group of uh, students down to Nashville and get to serve the kingdom and also learn what God is doing over there and take some of those concepts and ideas and hopefully implement them here uh, through our youth. And so I'm excited because I got to see a lot of God this week and I hope you did too. Uh, we serve an amazing God, amen? amen. God that offers freedom for all, not just uh, from the uh, physical level, but also spiritually. So uh, there's a quick announcement video. So if you make your attention, point it to the screen. Here are this morning's announcements. This is your friendly reminder to please take a moment to locate the friendship pad on the end of the pew or row where you are sitting this morning and fill it out. While doing this, be sure to see who else is sitting next to you and take a moment to introduce yourself. Calling all parents. We're going to start the party this year for VBS 2024 and celebrate the good news with a flashback to the 80s. Our Vacation Bible School begins on Monday, July 8th and goes through Thursday, the 11th and is open to ages three years old who are potty trained to rising sixth graders. Please note, today is the last day to register. Be sure to sign up on our website today. Reminder, our DUMC Church office will be closed this coming Thursday and Friday, July 4th and 5th for Independence Day. We will resume normal office hours next week.
That's a lot of hard work. Thank y'all for using your gifts and practicing so much to allow us to be called into worship. And if you would turn to your bulletins, the next part this morning is this morning's greeting. Um, if you would please read what is in bold. Freedom is coming. We can hear it in the voices of the universe. Hope is coming. We can see it in the eyes of the God is here. Let us pray together. God of freedom and miracles, we wait for your voice and direction this morning. News of tragedy and war glare at us from all directions. Hear our cries, O Lord. Come and comfort and heal our wounds. Open our hearts this day that we might become people who bring peace and hope to those in despair. For we ask these things in the name of the one who provides true freedom, Jesus Christ. Amen. And if now you would stand if you were able and pass the peace to one another this morning. Well, good morning to our online viewers. We are so thankful that you have joined us this morning. Although we miss you in person, we can feel you in spirit. If you would like to see all the events happening in our very active church, you can find all of those things on our website. You can also find all the contact info for any pastor if you need to contact them. My name is Erin. I am the director of worship, and I ask you to continue and to worship with us this day. seats. I'm going to ask Jeff and Kathy Basic, aka my in-laws, to the front here. <laughs> uh, this is awesome. This is exciting. Jeff and Kathy, uh, they have moved here to Denver from Fort Myers, Florida, where y'all have been attending the same church that I was attending growing up for roughly how long? 24 years. 24 years at our home church down in Riverside Church. My mom is also representing Riverside today. Uh, Drew and Courtney, a lot of family in town today. But uh, they are um, becoming members here. And it's really exciting. It's a joy and a pleasure for me to get to um, bring them into membership. And I have a few questions for you. And this is just one of our traditions. And um, as coming from a Baptist church, tradition is not necessarily your strength, which is fine. I had to learn a lot. It's no shade. It's just different. That's good. Um, so I have a few questions for you. On behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? We do. We do. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they may present themselves? We do. We do. do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? We do. We do. And um, I had one more, but basically, will you use your gifts and your talents and abilities to serve God's kingdom in Denver um, alongside your brothers and sisters in Christ? We will. we will. And now you as the church, will you continue to empower and strengthen Jeff and Kathy in their spiritual walk as brothers and sisters in Christ? And so with that, thank you for joining. We have a little gift for you, but give it up for Jeff and Kathy, newest members. Good stuff. We have a sh and Jeff and Kathy will be outside right after service. We actually have some special baptisms and reaffirmation of bap baptism after, so you can join them or greet them there. But now if we would pay attention to the screen, we have one more video.
Oh, stand up. Aaron, take over. Stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air. response of him. turn once again to your bulletin. Um, not all the time do we live into the calling we have as Christians to bring peace and freedom into the world, to partner with God on this mission. So let us confess together as a church body, God of celebrations and sorrows, our spirits ache for people both far and near who suffer and struggle just to have the basic necessities of life while we live in abundance. Forgive us when our celebration clouds the needs of others. May we never forget that you have given us a ministry and mission to perform here and now. 
Help us be mindful of our attitudes and our actions, bringing hope and comfort, reminding all that freedom is found in Christ. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I'm going to ask, we have some kids that are going to sing a song up front. Could you please, children, please come forward. We're going to meet right up here in the front. Ready? Come on. All right, as the kids come up, let's give them a round of applause. We're excited to see what they are presenting to us. We are going to throw this very cool dance that they are presenting to us on the screen. So, and I think that as a congregation, we should clap along and encourage them because we are excited to see what you guys have prepared for us. You ready, kids? Yeah? Okay, I'll take it. <laughs> Good morning. As you can see, we're getting everyone involved today. <laughs> this is truly about community. As a matter of fact, today's uh, scripture is going to be about uh, spiritual gifts. And uh, I think it's, gonna, it's, it's a perfect day to talk about spiritual gifts because this service is only happening because of our church coming together and using our spiritual gifts. We had no power in here on Friday. We had no air conditioning. We had no sound. We've got issues with air conditioning going on in other parts of our church right now. We've got people joining. We've got baptisms and reaffirmations going. I mean, we have everybody jumping in and using their spiritual gifts this morning with music, with worship. So I think this is a perfect day lined up to talk about how we as a church body can use our gifts. But right now, let's uh, go into prayer in gratitude and thanksgiving to our Lord this morning. Father, thank you. 
thank you that you love us and that you represent the body of the church, that you represent what community looks like from the very beginning of your word, of your love letters to us. You speak of the Trinity, the ultimate in community. And so, Father, as we as believers, as disciples, as saints, whatever the terms are, you are asking us to work together in community, to represent you, to look like your son, Jesus, in community, in fellowship, together. So, Father, in community, I ask that we come together. I know there's people who have come to us for prayer requests. There's people who have talked to all of us about struggles, trials. There's even people here today, Father, that are answered prayer because of our church coming together in community. And that is so awesome. It is so awesome to be witnesses of your answered prayers. And so, Father, we come together this morning as brothers and sisters filled with gratitude. May we wake up each morning starting the day with gratitude. Our days will be so much better if we start them that way. Father, I do lift up those who are in need of prayer. So we'll have a moment of silence for those in remembrance who came to us this very week and asked for prayer. Lord, thank you for Denver United Methodist Church, the body, the congregation, those who are in service to you, those who will be in service to you. May we continue to embolden our lives in the way that you are asking us to live them out as believers, for us to follow your son, to grow in your son, to serve in your son, and to share in your son. May we do so obediently, willingly, and boldly because you pursued us. Thank you for sending your son, your son who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not in temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So this morning, our time of offering is a way of worship. Um, There's multiple ways to give to our church. On the back of our bulletins, we've added a QR code to make it easier. Um, This church is a thriving church. This church is filled with abundance. There is much going on in our church and so much of it is because of our giving heart of this church. Um, Outside here in the hallway you will see there's some poster boards up of some examples of this sanctuary being updated and renovated. Um, These lights that are above us right now that right now are giving us light we can no longer get light bulbs for them so as each bulb goes out it's going to get darker and darker in here. We don't like darkness, so, um, but there's some beautiful boards out there that are renditions of what this sanctuary will look like when it's modernized outside of the narthex. It's going to be opened up to give us a lot more room for gathering instead of just being funneled in. Uh, So I encourage you to take a look at those. If you have questions, speak to Gary Garlow, to Tom Wallace. Um, They're helping spearhead this. Uh, Also, and another exciting thing that because of your giving, Today, giving is about impacting the lives of others. And today, we're going to have a baptism and a reaffirmation out front after the service that we encourage you to be part of. Um, You're going to get to see Ben have the privilege of baptizing his own son. And our giving is to impact lives. That is going to be a memory that that family will never forget. Talk about impacting lives. And what a privilege as a dad, as a pastor, to get to baptize your own son. And we thank you that you are helping us make that happen. They're going to get to be the only cool ones standing outside today. Cool because they're cool, but cool because they get to take a dip in the water. 
So come and enjoy that experience with us. So uh, Levi, if you'll come get the plates. Ushers, if you'll please come forward for this time of worship. Can you hear it? Can you hear it? Can you hear it? This is the sound. This is the sound of Jubilee.
Please stand if you're able. This morning's scripture comes from 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 8 through 11, and 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 4 through 14. Hear the good news. Above all, keep fervent in your love for one another, because love covers a multitude of sins. Be hospitable to one another without complaint. As each one has received a special gift, employ it in serving one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Whoever speaks is to do so <clears throat> as one who is speaking the utterances of God. Whoever serves is to do so as one who is serving by the strength which God supplies, so that in all things God God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom belongs the glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Now there are very, uh, varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit, and there are varieties of ministries and the same Lord. There are varieties of effects, but the same God who works all things in all persons. But to each one is given the manifestations of the Spirit of the common good. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, and to, the, to another the word of knowledge according to the same Spirit, but to another faith by the same Spirit, and to another gifts of healing by the one Spirit and to another the effecting of miracles, and to another prophecy, and to another the distinguishing of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, and to another the interpretation of tongues. But one and the same Spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually, just as he wills. For even as the body is one, and yet has many members, and all the members of the body, though they are many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one Spirit we were all baptized into the one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one Spirit. For the body is not one member, but many." The word of God for the people of God. You may be seated. Let us pray. Lord, take my heart, take all our hearts to a place where they have no will of its own so that we may receive your word in full capacity as you meant your word to be heard. Let us more importantly take your word and put it into action through love and through unity. Amen. So we're continuing the series Come and Go. The come and go title represents the bookend statements of Jesus with his life and experience with the disciples and his ministry with them. But our concentration is mostly on his word go, when he says go and make disciples in all nations. And this series is predicated on the question of, as I've said many times, are you trying to be a Christian without being a disciple? Now, the term disciple, it's actually used 239 times in the New Testament, but it's only used in the four Gospels and the book of Acts. And the majority of the time, it's used in a plural format. Only 25 times is it used singularly. 20 of those 25 times, it's speaking particularly in reference to John. And only one time is it actually used in singular format. And the reason is, is because disciple is about community. It's not mentioned in my, from my understanding and research outside of the four gospels and outside of the book of Acts for a particular reason. And that reason, my understanding is that the Greeks and the Gentiles wouldn't really understand the Jewish terminology of discipleship and the practices of discipleship. So the words were um, used as saints or believers, and it was typically in the context of family because 
everyone can understand family or the body of family. So the word discipleship kind of disappears in the Bible after those four Gospels and the Acts. So, you, But you can interchange the words saints, believers, and disciples, which all believers at the time of our salvation have that terminology as disciples. We've talked about what a disciple is, and a disciple is one who follows Christ, grows in Christ, serves in Christ, and shares Christ. That's all of us. That's our responsibility that we're given, and we really dive into the fact it's not one who just is a learner of Jesus Christ. It's actually a learner of how to be like Jesus Christ. That's the more accurate explanation as to what a disciple is. Now, when it comes to what a disciple does, Yes, we are to be learners of how to be like Jesus, but then there's a second phase of that, and that is to intentionally equip believers with the Word of God through accountable relationships, empowered by the Holy Spirit to replicate faithful followers of Jesus Christ. That's part two of what we are supposed to be doing. Henry Blackaby says, a church needs to learn to function as the body of Christ. It's not about individualism. Uh, matter of fact, uh, there's what's termed Eastern and Western understanding and philosophy. The whole Old Testament is the Eastern understanding, the Hebraic understanding of community. Everything was predicated on community. There was no individualism. It wasn't until the Greek introduction where we started going, okay, let me understand my life, and then how does God fit into it? Because up to that point it was, how do I understand God, and where do I fit into it? And that's how we are supposed to be living. In Romans 12, 5, it says, In Christ we who are many form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. And I think we can understand this if we look at this from a family context. In our families, as our, you know, we have our spouse, we have our children, we have our parents, we, our responsibility isn't individualistic, right? Our responsibility is to all family members. That's how God sees the body of the church. We are all family members, so we have responsibility to one another. Paul says in Ephesians 4.11 through 16, he says, And he himself, meaning Jesus, gave some as apostles, some as prophets, some as evangelists, and some as pastors and teachers to equip the saints for the ministry of, or for the work of ministry, to equip the believers. So it's not just a pastor, it's not a pastor's only role to disciple, to bring and grow the church. It's the body's responsibility. And that's to build up the body of Christ until we all attain the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son. A mature person attaining a measure of Christ's full stature. So we are, so we are no longer to be children tossed back and forth by waves and carried about by every wind of teaching by the trickery of people and craftily carry out their deceitful schemes. In other words, we as a body are supposed to go through a mature maturing process, a sanctification process as believers, discernment comes in there and we're supposed to use that discernment, help one another with that discernment so we aren't easily distracted, easily dissuade. But practicing the truth in love, all of this is to be done in love, not out of duty. God's not asking us to do this out of duty. He's not asking us to be believers because he wants behavior modification. It's all at the root of love. We will in all things then grow up in Christ who is the head of the body. From him the whole body grows, fitted and held together through every supporting ligament. As each one of us does its part, the body builds itself up in love. That's what it's all about, building up his church for God. I've shared with you that discipleship is not something God wants from us. Discipleship, being a believer, being a saint, is what God wants for us. He lovingly equips us. 
This is what's so incredible. When, when we gave our life to Christ, we received not just salvation, which you, I mean, we don't even deserve that. And yet that's one of his incredible gifts to us at the moment of salvation. We also, at that very moment, receive all of God's promises. Each one of us receives all his promises. We also then are given the first of our inheritance, the Holy Spirit who lives inside of us, who abides inside of us, who fills our heart. Which means then, and we talked about this uh, earlier, we all receive the fruit of the Spirit, right? And we, it's already inside of us. We termed our uh, sermon series called Unleashing the Nine, the Nine Fruits, because they're already inside of us. We just need to unleash them. We're given all of that. And then on top of all of this, he gives each and every one of us spiritual gifts. All of this is given to us at that time of salvation when we give our lives to Christ. So all of these gifts are given to us. Is it now making sense why Jesus says at the moment of salvation, when we receive the Holy Spirit, go and make disciples? Remember, we said, he never said, go and get a master's degree in divinity or go read the Torah, right? He said, the moment at salvation, go. It's because he gives us all of these gifts right off the bat. And it's not us doing the work. We're just the vessels. It's the Holy Spirit doing the work. So it should make sense why we should be bold, we should be willing, we should be obedient when God says to go and make disciples. We're filled with this abundance of gifts. You hear people say sometimes, uh, you know, God doesn't call the equipped. He equips the called. We hear that. Sometimes you might hear, he said, um, he doesn't, um, it's not only, the only ability you need is availability. And that's the truth. The only ability you need is availability. That's what God's asking from us. So when we look at these spiritual gifts that we're given, which is what we're diving into today, we need to understand the difference between natural talent versus spiritual gifts, because they are very different. Natural talents are considered inherent or developed through human means. Maybe, for example, playing a musical instrument, athletic abilities, artistic skills. But spiritual gifts are divinely given to believers by the Holy Spirit. That's one major difference. The purpose of natural gifts are often for personal or societal benefits. But while the spiritual gifts are specifically for the edification of the church community, of faith, of service to God, and to expand the church. And when we mean expand, we mean winning souls over, adopting into God's family. And that is to always be done through love and with the focus on unity. Also, how do we recognize this? Well, natural talents are recognized in both secular and religious contexts, while spiritual gifts are primarily acknowledged within the religious communities and received, like I said, at the time of salvation. There's a nature that comes along with these spiritual gifts. And when you identify your spiritual gifts, this is a starting point to grow and serve God in the way he intends. Okay? So when we learn our spiritual gifts, when we're intentional about it, we now are learning how God intends us to be part of the body. I realize many of us don't know our spiritual gifts and are serving in the church. And those are great intentions. But the truth is, if we don't know our spiritual gifts, we're using talents the way we think they're to be intended, not how God gave us our spiritual gifts in the way he intended. I use the example, I think, in our podcast. If I'm doing administrative work down in the office, and that's helpful and it's beneficial, but if that's not my gift, I'm probably robbing somebody of their gift, who that is administrative work. And I'm also taking myself out of my game of my, using my spiritual gift to benefit others. So it's important for us to be intentional to know what those gifts are that God meant for us. So the nature of them is, is like I said, at the moment of salvation is when we receive our unique giftedness, 
which is given to each Christian by the Holy Spirit. And in the purpose of our gifts is to build up God's church. In 1 Peter 4.10, we just read all Christians, every Christian, it's scripture. Every Christian has at least one gift. God also gives us spiritual gifts graciously. They're, never, they're not earned. They're unmerited. They're unconnected to anything to deal with our worthiness. No spiritual gift can be in function in isolation. They're all used for the greater in an exponential factor for building up the church. And Paul reminds us that the Christian community entail, entails interdependence among spiritual gifts. And those gifts lack, this is important, we can use those gifts, but if they're not used out of love, if we think we're using them because it's what God wants out of duty, there's no authenticity with how we're using that gift. Some biblical principles of spiritual gifts. One, the spirit decides and is assigning those gifts and enables believers to accomplish God's work. The body is a single unit made up of many parts, of we, as we've heard in scripture many times. And members of the body do not determine their roles in the function of the church. And this is where discernment comes into play. And another reason why we need to be intentional to learn what our God-given gifts are. God puts the members in the body where he wants them to be. The body is not complete without all the members God has intended for the given body. Members of the body need every other member of the body. So if we're not all understanding our spiritual gifts, imagine where this church can be propelled to if we are using our spiritual gifts as a whole, as all of us in unity together. The body should, not, should be united as one, not divided. Another principle is members of the body should have equal concern for one another. Just like with, I said with our family members, we have concern or responsibilities for all of our family. It's the same way in the church. And members of the body have different assignments from God for the good of the entire church, for his church body. We talked about last week... Um, on the back of the bulletin, there is a free gifts assessment, spiritual gifts assessment. This is just one. There's many of them out there. Also, this is just a starting point to understanding what your spiritual gifts are. This is not something rock solid. Okay, this is supposed to be just a starting point with what your gifts may be. So if you haven't done so, if you're not sure what your spiritual gifts are, I would encourage you to go take this spiritual gifts assessment that's on the back of the bulletin and see what your starting point is. You'll get um, like the top five out of which we'll talk about the, you know, there's about 20 different spiritual gifts. You'll see where your tendencies, where your leanings are. And what's very cool about this is your blend of spiritual gifts are as unique as your fingerprint. So no one person has the same spiritual assessment of blending of gifts. It's as, you, as unique as your fingerprint. Today you receive this church handout. This is also just another tool, another starting point. Once you take that assessment, you'll see there's a description for what your tendencies are of your spiritual gifts. We put the definitions on the back of this sheet. Most people stop at that point and struggle with, okay, these are my gifts, now what to do? So what we did was on the other side of this page are suggested areas that actually match up with your spiritual gifts of where you can serve, where you can do ministry using your unique gifts in the church. There is an entire church body of areas to be one body within this church where we all can serve and be part of this church. Um, there's a lot going on in our church. Um, a good example, think of the size of this campus. 
We have this building, we have the um, cork, we have our chapel, we have administrative offices, we have the gym, we have classrooms, we have baseball fields, we have the Boy Scout hut, the um, furniture building, right? Home for the, uh, where we do our um, furniture for the future. There's a lot of acreage here. When you see the names being passed at the beginning of service up on the screen of all the different roles in the church that are required for this church to run properly, there's one position that you're probably not even aware of that we don't have at this church. We don't have a maintenance person for this entire church. We have nobody who handles all the maintenance in this church. The staff comes together, your church leadership comes together, your trustees come together and find a way to get it done. And I used to wonder about that, but the more I dive into spiritual gifts, the more I say, you know what, that's our church being very responsible with the finances because that's how it's supposed to be done, if possible. So we're not paying a salary for a maintenance person to run this entire campus. It's being done by your church, by your congregation, by your staff, by your leadership team. And I think God's honoring that. I think that's why this church is, is one of the reasons why it's so blessed, is because we are being good stewards. We are trying to leverage people's spiritual gifts. So take a look at this sheet. There's a lot that needs to be done. We don't have somebody who changes all the filters. And by the way, we have 30 HVAC systems on this campus. How many do you have at your house? One, two? We know how expensive that is to repair and replace, right? We have 30. We don't have, we don't have somebody who changes the filters or responsible for doing that. We sure would love to have someone. There's a lot of opportunity on here. We also started in conjunction with the spiritual gifts. You'll see out there, we call it the blessing board. It's filled with opportunities of areas to serve in the church or areas where you can step up and serve. Or some of you might be electricians, some of you might be plumbers. Some of you may have one to two spare hours a month where you can help water the garden that is offering a lot of food. I forget how many pounds of food that we've collected. We're, we're tallying it, but there's a lot of food coming out of that garden to serve people in our community. We need people just to simply show up and water in the morning water in the evenings. It's as simple as that, to be part of the body of this congregation, of this church. There's some different descriptions. I'm not an expert when it comes to spiritual gifts. The Bible mentions 20 of them. Some of them are, there's different factions out there. Some believe there's a couple that were just temporary, like healing, miracles, um, tongues. Some people believe that happens today. I'm not an expert, but that's where your discernment comes into play. But there are, on the back of your sheet, ones that are primary that will help out, especially right here at our church, such as evangelism, which is people who are passionately leading others to saving others for the knowledge of Christ. There's prophecy, and by the way, prophecy is not predicting the future. You're not a Nostradamus, right? Prophecy is one who carries forward God's word, God's message. There's teaching, there's exhortation, which is motivating others. There's shepherding, there's mercy, there's serving, there's giving, there's administration. All of these are different spiritual gifts that this body of the church has. So I encourage you, I ask of you, as part of a way to call forward and call to action to being an integral part of this church, learn what your gifts are. Share them with one another. Let's work together as a body of church to impact God's kingdom. I said there's some goals that go along with this entire sermon series where we are trying to uplift the body of this church into being hungry to be known as believers and live as believers in the same strength, the same passion that this community understands this church to be servers in the community. And one of the goals or an encompassing way of saying this is to inspire a hunger within each of us to live out our God. God-given purpose and clarity 
with clarity and passion, discovering and using our spiritual gifts by growing our ability to discern God's voice and direction in our lives, empowered to serve alongside others in community, fueled by advancing and growing God's kingdom. I'd mentioned to you before when the re, you know one of the reasons maybe discipleship's not happening is because we've lost the practice of apprenticeship. We've lost that understanding of what it is to coach one another. And one of the downside results of that are is that we do not know our God-given purpose as a whole. We do not know how God speaks to each one of us predominantly. We are unaware of what our spiritual gifts are and what spiritual practices are to keep us close to Christ. And that is what this whole entire sermon series is. And that's what this is encompassing. And out of that, at the end of this 10 weeks, we are hoping that there'll be an increase, a large increase in number of individuals who want to come together as a body of Christ and serve in this church. We want people, this family, to understand the practices of community by partaking in Wednesday night meals, existing con uh, connection groups, maybe starting some home groups, some dinner groups. And then also in the fall, we will be starting a discipleship, a leadership institute, where we will dive into a 10-week period of becoming disciples. And then at the end of that 10 weeks, inviting one other person to join us and actually doing phase two of discipleship, and that is coaching, discipling others. This is what we're trying to accomplish by this sermon series called Come and Go. Our gifts are useless if they're not exercised in love. And they're definitely useless if we don't try to learn what they are. If we do not exercise our gifts, the growth of the church is hindered. Let us not hinder the growth of Denver United Methodist Church. Let us know what our gifts are. Your creator who has handwoven you is pursuing you. And as I said when I opened up, the question is, are you trying to be a Christian without being a disciple? I'm going to keep asking the same closing questions. If things remain today as they are, can you say that your best days are ahead of you? Is today going to be your first day, day one? Or is today just going to be another one day? Amen. Lord, thank you that you are pursuing us no matter where we are in our lives, no matter how we are living. You are pursuing us. You want a relationship with us. You want us to live to our fullest. Thank you for all that you pour out to us, even just at the moment when we give our lives to you. May we take action, Father, and respond in love and unity as a family and come together to further your kingdom alongside of you. We ask these things in your name, Lord. Amen. Please stand and join us in
Let us leave here today knowing that we are showered with God's gifts. Let us walk out of here with our chins up high and be a blessing to all those we come in contact with. And I also invite you to come out front and be part of a baptism and a reaffirmation. Amen.